All right, what's up, guys? So we just got back from Evo Japan. Three-day event happened in Tokyo. If you've been following on Twitter, you might think that it was the worst event of all time. There's been a lot of drama. There's a lot of uh, negativity going around. There's an absolute disaster. I'm never coming back here. If you don't believe me, let's just look at some of these. The big punk, of course, was the star of the weekend. He threw his tea bottle. But it's not just him, right? You see, uh, you know, Rangchu Korean player uh, in Japan. The monitor was laggy. Knee had a tweet, monitor was laggy, they messed up Arsenal Nash right here, monitor's laggy, Punk blamed the monitor. Latif says, I'm never coming back, blah, blah, blah. Romola, but basically, a lot of top players were complaining about the event, and uh, that's what I wanna talk about. So just the event as a whole, my, my thoughts, unbiased, because I was not hired to work this year, but yeah, I just wanna go over everything that I experienced, just share with it, and basically, you don't watch the whole thing. What I wanna say is that EVO Japan 2023 is like, one tiny step away from being a really, really, really good event. They don't need to change anything. They just need to have like, put Rick, give him a little bit more control, make, have him call a little bit more shots, keep everything the way it is. Next year should be a great tournament. Anyway, let's go, let's talk about it. Like always, you like this stuff, you like fighting games, hit the damn subscribe button and let's go. Now, these are just in order, like I said, I'm just be rambling here. So first off, the location. The location for EVO Japan is the best location for uh, any Evo Japan so far. So it was right in Tokyo, if you don't know where it is, right in Tokyo, in big site. Very, very, about, I would say, as central as you're gonna get uh, in Japan. And if you compare it to the other majors, Daytona Beach, Las Vegas, the suburbs of Chicago, I think the Evo Japan location might be the best for a major tournament, right? In my opinion. Of course, I do live in, I do live in Tokyo, but that, that's pretty good. Uh, it, it's really cheap too, right? So the other thing too is like location, like Vegas is cool. You're like, I can go to Vegas and go to Gam, I can see a show. You're also paying like $15 for a bottle of water. You know, Tokyo is quite cheap. There's a lot of very reasonable uh, convenience stores right there. Food, you know, Airbnb is cheap. So everything is, I think, a very reasonable location. And hopefully next year, they do it in the same exact spot. You know, they've done a bunch of different venues, a dump, bunch of different locations in Tokyo. I hope they just keep it here for the rest of the time. Now the venue, so the venue, okay, this is a little bit different from the location. The location is Tokyo Big Site, as you said. Here's a little tiny picture. I'm sure you can find some other uh, pictures of the whole place filled out, but it was good, it was good. It was spacious, it didn't feel too cramped. I think a little bit more room for the non-fighting game stuff I would have enjoyed, but overall it was good. Now the problem with the venue, again, like I said, easy fix, easy fix, is it was a damn sauna. On the first day, that was when I was there at the venue, the first day was sweltering hot. And the thing that was messed up is like, I saw people that weren't there saying, yeah, Japan's a hot country. It's very humid in Japan. No, no shit, it's hot in there. It's not, it's cold. This week right now in Japan is very cold, very chilly. Only the venue was hot. So this venue is in the back of the building, underground, not underground, but it's down on like the first floor. So it's kind of like locked in here. It was gross. There was steam at the top. Now, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, you can kind of see it. So right in the back there, next to that number two, you see that little gate right there? So they had a bunch of gates. They had a bunch of like, what are they called? Like garages or, or whatever. They were all shut. If they just opened those up and let some air in there, that would have fixed the whole problem. Towards the end of the first day, they started opening some of them up, like just a little crack like that. And it was like night and day. If you just stood near there, you're getting blasts of cold air. I don't know why they didn't have them all open the whole time. I don't know if it's a security thing, but that should have been open the whole time. It was, it was stuffy as hell. But again, the venue was good. That was an issue. So hopefully next year they take that into consideration. My other complaint about the venue is that they didn't sell any alcohol. They had convenience stores with no strong zeros. What is that? It's a scam. But anyway, good location, good venue. The setups. So the setups, this is like where all the complaints come from, right? So this is like Punk and everybody complaining, complaining, laggy monitor setting. Now, what you need to understand is what Punk and those players were complaining about is the stream setup. The tournament itself, as you see, there were hundreds, right? There's hundreds of setups for pools. I played on six different setups uh, over the weekend. I had zero issue. Aside from the fact that it's on PlayStation and I play on, you know, the God monitor, every set I played on, no problem at all. PlayStation, you know, monitor. They all, by the way, they all had two headsets as well. Two really good headsets, like completely noise canceling. Even with Bobby screen behind me, I could focus on the game. So the setups were fine for pools, is what I'll say. I didn't play on the stream setup. Multiple players said it was bad. So that is an issue that, you know, again, we can bring in more experienced Western TOs that can handle this. But 
Yeah, aside from the stream setup, which is what they're complaining about, I had no issues. I don't really, I didn't see a lot of issues as well. You always have to take these with a, a, a grain of salt too, right? Because it'll, the players, I've never seen a fighting game tournament where players didn't complain about certain setups. So I'll just say my experience with all the setups and casuals and tournament, no problem at all. So yeah, again, as, I, as I'm saying so far, all of these, right? One, two, three, all really good. And those are three key points, right? These are three key points of the event, right? One, two, three, all great. Just keep it like that. Now we're getting the now we're getting into the big stuff though. So number four, the brackets. Now this is my complaint. The brackets are terrible. And again, though, this is an easy fix, but the brackets will run absolute horrible. Now, why did this happen? Why were the brackets run so poorly? Because Japan doesn't have any experience running brackets. In the States, you have all sorts of majors, you have locals and stuff. And usually for like Evo, you get TOs, people that have experience at other tournaments. There's no opportunity for people to get TO experience in this country. I heard, I can't confirm that a lot of the people running the brackets were not FTC to begin with. Uh, again, this I, I can't confirm it, but I heard, you know, of course there were volunteers from the FTC, but there were also some people outside, maybe from like a contracting company that didn't know anything about fighting games or like first to two or like, what the heck's going on? That was one issue that everybody was very, you know, not familiar with one, running a bracket. But the biggest issue is that there were no DQs. This was a free to enter tournament, right? A free to enter tournament. So there were thousands of people that signed up and thousands that didn't show up that should have been DQ'd on the spot. Five minutes. It should have been, all right, everyone's here. We're starting right now. You're not here. You're DQ'd. You're DQ'd. You're DQ'd. You have to DQ everybody right off the bat. They did not. And with all the pools there, people were afraid to DQ. They, it was horrible. Every single pool, every single game got super delayed. People are just standing around waiting and waiting and waiting. And then like an hour later, like, okay, we're going to DQ him. No. But again, like I said, this is that was horrible, but this is inexperience. We, you have enough people say, look, this was terrible. You need to fix it next year. They can fix it. Right? Again, again, this is an easy fix, right? This is an easy fix. At one point for my Tekken pool, I just started DQing people. Because my bracket runner was just kind of, he didn't know what to do. He was like, I have to wait to get the okay. I was like, no, you don't. I was like, hey, whatever the guy's name was, are you here? No? Give me that. Just DQ him right there. That's all you have to do. Just DQ these dudes. It's free to enter. Oh my God. That, that's my complaint. And that's everyone's complaint. Everybody had a horrible tournament experience in that regard. And it's so easy to fix. Just DQ him. That's all you have to do. The stream. Ah, now this is personal. I'm very upset. I'm very upset at the stream. So this is a good event. You had some of the highest level play in the entire world. And what happened? Where was the stream? It was Sajam with his socks at like 4.30 in the morning in San Francisco. So the English stream was off site in San Fran. Now, I know that they wanted to be here. You know, I know the, the English production crew. I know those guys wanted, they definitely wanted to be here. I know, I know the commentators wanted to be here. I know everybody wanted to be here, but for some reason they were not. I don't know the the story behind that. I don't know. I know some old dude that probably said, oh, it'll, it'll be fine. But that was very, very disappointing. Like. You'll never be, I don't care how good your commentators are, you'll never be able to capture the like energy and the feeling of a tournament if you're not there. On the ground, with the noise, right in the seat with the player, you'll never ever be able to capture the energy. So I tried, you know, I had talked when I found out that they were gonna do a remote stream. I said, hey, I can do it right here. You don't have to pay me. I got all the equipment. You literally just give me a table. That's all, I, I'll bring my own table. Just give me the okay. I can do it. I could have saved Obama from running around filming cosplayers. We had more than enough commentators there. It could have been a really fun stream and it just, I never got, I never got the no. It just suddenly all communication got cut. So I wonder what happened there. I wonder who, who shot it down. But if you're going to do this again next year, please have a, a, a on-site English stream. Please, you need it. I'm still tight, man, I'm still tight. The staff. All right, so the staff here, now there was a lot, it was good, but like I said earlier, so the staff, there was a lot of people, they had like a, a volunteer area, they had a volunteer area that was very helpful. They were lending out sticks. There was a lot of people, a lot of people at Evo Japan that were helped running the event, like the overall event, that were very, very helpful and very, very kind. But again, going back to the staff they hired for the bracket, like the actual bracket runners and the tournament staff, they need to be, I'm not saying you have to get off, you see, but they need to be trained next year. <laughs> we gotta train these people. So I think people might get afraid to be, DQing somebody is very like confrontational. Like what if I DQ them and they yell at me? You have to tell everybody it's okay to DQ. It's okay if they get angry at you. There should be like a manager. That's what I think Obama would be good at. Obama 
instead of being a cameraman walking around, he should be the manager on the floor. So like if a player gets angry at the staff and the staff is like, they're scared, they don't know how to like fight back, they'll just say, please go see the manager. So then they can go get angry at Obama and that, that'll end real quick. They'll be like, oh, you're right, I should have been DQ'd, I'm sorry about that. But I, I think I think there should have been more maybe leadership on the board because like leaving these up to like the inexperienced staff, I don't think, I don't think was a very good idea. But yeah, next year, thank you to all volunteers, but next year let's train harder, please. Non-gaming, all right, so non-gaming. This is, uh, I just mean, aside from the tournament and everything, they had a Tekken 8, they had Tekken 8, which is really cool. That was like the first time it's ever been playable. So that was really cool. They had Street Fighter 6 out there, they had Bedman. So they had the official like brands there, which was nice, but the there was no artist alley really. There was like one artist booth. There was almost no merch. They had like a cosplay like, parade and stuff, but I wish they had more. This is something that I noticed at EVO last year in Vegas. EVO in Vegas, is it's like half fighting game tournament, half convention. The hall is split. I think that's awesome, you know? As much as, you know, competition is, is key, but FTC is bigger than that. I wish there was more to do. I wish more people got set up, but it might've been, that's why I said earlier, I don't know, maybe the venue was a little bit too small to have it all. I felt like the venue was fine for what it is, but if we wanted more, like if we wanted a bigger artist alley, bigger like vendor there, maybe you need more space or maybe it's not a lot. I have no idea. But yeah, I wish there was more stuff to do non-fighting game in the venue, but outside of that, right? So again, this is what I'm gonna tell you about the Evo experience. So outside of being at the venue, every single day, like the week before EVO, the week after EVO, every single day in Tokyo, there's been multiple fighting game gatherings. You know, we have, of course, Tatakai Tuesdays happening. There was something that had the international exhibition today. So there's tons of stuff to do outside of EVO. Like I said, it's fighting game related, but also, you know, you're in Tokyo, man. We hosted, you know, 100, 100 people, Izakaya out there, but there's not just me, right? I saw mad people go out, big groups of 30 people, Yakiniku, like 30 people, Izakaya, Kairuken night. So I think that goes back to the location, but, it's good. It's a good event. There's a lot, a lot of stuff to do. And again, I think that can only really happen in, in Tokyo. I'm not trying to do the hundred person IHOP party in Daytona Beach, man. Definitely not. And then last, yeah, other, you know, closing thoughts. I guess it's just like at the end of the day, it was a free event, right? It's a free event, which is amazing. You know, it's free. So many people. I think five thousand people showed up for Evo, and I saw a tweet that said something like twenty five plus went to the venue. I've met a lot of foreigners too that didn't even know what was happening. They were just here on vacation and they, they swung by. So that can only happen at a free event. So that, that alone makes up for a lot of stuff. So overall, like I said, I think EVO Japan 2023 was an excellent event. Unless you were one of these five very, very serious, you know, if you're a very sweaty competitor, you had to play on stream, that's an L. But again, that's an easy fix. And then the bracket stuff, again, that's also an easy fix. But I think like the base, the foundation, out of all the other Evos that we've had, you know, the, the Ikebukuro one, the Fukuoka, which is too far, the Makari Messi, again, way too far, I don't like that one. I was like, this is where it's gotta stay. I think we gotta keep it here. Just, literally, if we have a run back, like just like, can we run it back? next week let rick take more control you know let the american tos take more control because you know they were just doing like side consulting for this one we could fix all these problems and be a pretty pretty amazing event but yeah that's it i, I had a good time like i had a very good time i am biased because it's it's a 15 minute train ride from where i live so i understand you know if you flew out here specifically for the event you dropped all the money why you'd be angry at the way it's run but bro, i don't go go to izakaya i don't know go Go drink a strong zero on the street, man. You're in Tokyo. Go have some fun. But now, nah, for real, I hope I hope you don't get dissuaded because it definitely, like I said, there's way more negative, at least on, you know, Western Twitter, there's way more negativity than positivity. But what I'm saying is that I think it was very fun and it's very easy fix to make it a really, really good event. I, I feel like once people calm down too, they're like, you know, I'm glad I came out. We'll see. Anyway, let me know what you think. Did you go? Did you attend? Did you watch the stream? How was the stream? I didn't I didn't watch it. I was I was busy streaming on site myself. If they have it again next year at the same venue, do you want to go? You think you'll come back or, or you don't want to you don't want to waste your money because the mod the, the stream monitor was like, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. But yeah, let me know. Like I like again, shout out to Evo. Please have it again. But like I said, please fix the problems and it should be it should be good to go. But yeah, that's it for this one. I rambled, but I had to get off my chest. I I had a fun weekend. But anyway, I'll see you next one. Peace.